During the 15th and 16th century, in just four generations, mankind built what seemed impossible for a thousand years. They advanced physics, mathematics, art and architecture at such a rapid pace that we can only look back in awe. But how? We look at the past and, more importantly, into the future, where a second renaissance in science, technology, business and art may be upon us. What can we learn from the man who created the most well-known pieces of art of all time? and who built the foundational inventions for the centuries to come. What were the factors of this paradigm shift to happen? And how does it relate to our situation today? And how did these three men make all of this possible? Let's find out. To understand what factors formed the Renaissance men, we need to go back in time. In 1350, the Black Death, the most fatal pandemic recorded in human history, wiped out half of Europe. Historians theorize that this was a catalyst for a changing worldview. People realized they could die any day. They became familiar with death. The result of this was that thinkers started thinking more about their life on Earth itself, while spirituality and the afterlife became less important. It really did turn people from pessimists into optimists. People wanted to live their best, most productive, beautiful life here on Earth. This change in worldview meant that mankind was no longer seen as this sinful, rotten creature like in the Middle Ages. Mankind was seen as a creation of God that was closer to God than all other beings. One could almost become God. This is a strong testament that change and improvement is possible. Michelangelo's David, the most well-known sculpture of all time, symbolizes this newfound confidence. But confidence is only one small part of the equation. The next parts are more important. The Medici family were bankers to the Pope, which made them not only very rich, but also very powerful politically. Their impact on the Renaissance was felt on two levels. Both are paralleled today. Giovanni di Medici was one of the first bankers who introduced double-entry bookkeeping, where every transaction is recorded in two accounts, a debit to one account and a credit to another. This built the foundation to modern accounting and made economic planability more achievable. Just 13 years ago, we witnessed the biggest evolution of this since the Renaissance. Ubi non est ordo, ibi est confusio. Where there is no order, there is confusion. Satoshi Nakamoto made triple entry accounting feasible with Bitcoin and the blockchain technology. Where there is no order, there is confusion. Bitcoin's underlying blockchain is alternatively referred to as time chain. It establishes an indisputable history of events witnessed on a global scale, thereby fixing the problem of order that different books would often have. Giovanni's children, Cosimo and Lorenzo, turn Florence into the capital of the Renaissance, a beta version of Silicon Valley, which currently decays into a beta version of the next thing. The most creative and innovative people came to Florence for two reasons money and Lorenzo the Magnificent. He was said to be an incredible diplomat who brought all the artists to Florence, just like some city and state majors today are trying to attract tech founders. He also put up the first nude stature since antiquity. This seems like a trivial detail, but it's actually important. It turns out nudity is necessary to study and understand the human body, which is what Leonardo da Vinci did among all his other side projects. His findings about anatomy are still building the basis of our understanding today. Back to the Medici. Lorenzo and his brother sponsored art and architecture and for the first time in human history, artists became celebrities. They even started signing their pieces of art and made money from it. Da Vinci was born a bastard and later on lived like a king and Michelangelo even denied the Pope at times. I think it feels like today is somewhat similar. Sure, most artists are still struggling to make a living through the pennies they receive from Spotify. But we live in an increasingly creator-driven economy. I previously talked about Marc Andreessen's concept of software eating the world being applicable to creators eating the world. The question is, where is the next Florence? Where is the next Silicon Valley? It might even be a network state, or the capital might be in the cloud altogether. By the way, I hope it's clear by now that Satoshi is one of the figures to kickstart the next renaissance. He's not the only one though. What he created aligns with what the Medici created. It also aligns with what Martin Luther did. But to make Luther's reformation and the link to Satoshi possible, there is one key invention that's still missing. The steam engine, electric light, automobile, computer and the internet. One invention of the second millennium tops them all when it comes to long-lasting impact. The most important invention of the millennium was the printing press by Johannes Gutenberg, which also crowned him the title Man of the Millennium. Being able to print books cheaply drastically lowered the barriers of education and allowed literacy to greatly expand. In the information age, we experience a similar revolution of media. 
Not only have the marginal costs of reproduction vanished, you can learn anything you want from wherever you want for free, as long as you have an internet connection. Some coding bootcamps even pay you to get educated. High quality knowledge is more democratized than ever before, and I hope that I can play a small role in that too. This democratization of education led to expressions of opinions and to questioning what is true. Literacy thereby changed the importance of the church, which was the source of truth for a long time. Today, the source of truth is questioned like in the days of the Renaissance. What used to be an affair of the church became an affair of the state and state-controlled media. The trust in these entities is vanishing. Nowadays, celebrities are going directly to other celebrities or influencers to spread their message, instead of the New York Times. Today, everyone is a journalist. At the same time, understanding what is real and what is not has become increasingly more difficult. AI deepfakes will only accelerate this trend. What literacy did to society during the Renaissance, we can achieve today through digital literacy. The personal computer is the most powerful creative tool ever invented. Being comfortable with it and being able to learn new applications fast is the equivalent of being able to read in the early days of the Renaissance. And there, it changed everything. This is where it all comes together, and one gear clicks into the next. As I said, until this point, the source of knowledge was the church, informants of God. And the church profited on people's fears. One might say this is what mainstream media is doing today. But what fear exactly? The fear to go to hell for one's sins. So the church offered indulgences. You pay the church money, get a piece of paper, and the punishment of your sins will be lower in the afterlife. Enter Martin Luther, a priest who basically said, that's a scam. It's a construct of the church that can't be traced back to the original source, which is the Bible. So he wrote his 95 Theses and they were nailed onto the door of All Saints Church in Wittenberg on October 31st, 1517. Now that the printing press was available and literacy was going up, his message spread across Europe rapidly. The church lost its monopole on education. On October 31st, 2008, exactly 491 years later, the white paper Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, was published. The date is not by accident. Satoshi Nakamoto didn't criticize the church, he condemned central banks. The root problem with conventional currency is all the trust that's required to make it work. The central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency, but the history of fiat currencies is full of breaches of that trust. Banks must be trusted to hold our money and transfer it electronically, but they landed out in waves of credit bubbles with barely a fraction in reserve. As the church lost its monopoly of education, states are losing their monopoly of money. Satoshi Nakamoto is the first person that came to my mind when I think about a second renaissance. His invention might lead to a lower time preference, which made the great art and architecture during the renaissance possible. Bitcoin changes the status quo of who is in power and could lead to further changes in economies as a whole. One idea is the pseudonymous economy in which usernames become more important than real names. After all, Satoshi created a trillion dollar asset and we don't know who he, she or they are. Rather than make naive appeals to people to look past gender or race or to not cancel or to not discriminate online, instead we make it impossible to do that by taking away that information entirely with realistic avatars and fully functional pseudonyms. I really wonder who the other modern renaissance men turn out to be. You can think of him whatever you want, but Elon Musk is certainly in that category. During the renaissance, Columbus went on his adventure and tripled the size of the known world. Elon's Mars mission and making humanity a multiplanetary species is the modern version of exactly that. The 21st century is still in its early days. The societal impacts of the inventions and innovations we created are comparable to those that kickstarted the renaissance. From double entry bookkeeping to triple entry bookkeeping from the printing press to digital media and the internet, from mechanics to robotics, from wealthy artists to wealthy artists, and maybe from the Americas to Mars. The Renaissance men teach us optimism. They teach us to be confident in our own abilities. And they teach us to challenge the status quo. What follows is an explosion in creative works and groundbreaking technology. The future is not as bleak as the media often makes you think it is. Yes, we are in a recession and things might go south further with the prospect of World War III. But the tools we build and will continue to build will move us forward. This is my thesis. Renaissance is French for rebirth. One aspect I didn't cover in this video at all is the impact of artificial intelligence in this context. 
That's why you should check out this video next, because AI alone will vastly expand the fields of media and art creation and more. Thank you for watching.